everybody. Welcome to the Hamakua Homestead. My name is Tiffany and here on this channel I'm taking you along for all of the adventures here on the ranch. Today we are pressure canning. Today we are making butternut squash soup and I am going to be roasting our ingredients before we go ahead and make it into soup. But I do want to note that this is not butternut squash soup, like the puree that you're used to seeing, like the consistency of a thick tomato sauce uh, soup, because um, we can't can it that way. But what we can do, what we can do, <laughs> is cut it up into um, chunks. And then once you're ready to take it off of your pantry shelf and serve it up for yourself, you can go ahead and blend it up right there, add some cream, add some sour cream, that would be good. Um, whatever you wanna to add to it at that point. So we're gonna go ahead and get to roasting our butternut squash. In the early morning rain, with a dollar in my hand, and an aching in my heart And my pockets full of sand So we have our butternut squash in the oven. I just drizzled olive oil on it and I'm gonna go ahead and let it get that roasty flavor. And while that's happening, I'm gonna cut up our carrots and jalapenos and onions. So those onions are making me cry a little bit. But next step after we have our onions cut up, our carrots and our jalapenos, next we are gonna go ahead and cut in half our red bell peppers. I'm going to half them, core them, seed them, and then throw those in the oven to roast them as well. Now I like to keep my vegetable scraps my onions, the ends, the pieces of garlic, everything. And I keep them in a freezer bag, in the freezer until it is full or until I'm ready to make a vegetable broth or even a different kind of broth with vegetables in it. And then they are ready to go into our stock. Adds great flavor and it doesn't waste all the nutrition. Tasted good. Women all fast. There she goes, my friend. Olive oil and salt. She is rolling out at last. Hear the mighty engine roll. Okay, so I have our first butternut squash out of the oven. It's not roasted all the way through for sure. You can see the coloring in there, but I feel like it's ready. I don't want it to go to mush. Well, actually that doesn't matter, but I don't want it to go to mush before it's canned. Um, so I'm gonna figure out how to get it out of the shell. We'll just see what we come up with. I above the clouds should fly. That looks incredible. The sun always shines. She'll be flying over my home in about three hours' time. Okay, so 
we're just going to go ahead and do the same thing with all of the rest of them. And we're going to end up with one gigantic pot of butternut squash. This old airport's got me down. It's no earthly good to me. Cause I'm stuck here on the ground. As cold and drunk as I can be. You can't jump a big jet plane. Like you can an old freight train. Well, our last butternut squash is cooling and our red peppers are cooling down. I'm gonna get our broth started. You could use bouillon, you could use um, better than bouillon, you could really whatever you want, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use our chicken feet broth that we made together a few months ago. My thought process for getting this warmed up now is because I think It'll take our monster canner a little bit less time to come up to heat if the broth is already hot. Be on my way in the early morning rain. You jump the big jet plane like a can in old freight train. So I'd best be on my way. So what I've decided to do is go ahead and mix all of our ingredients together in one big pot because with the roasted peppers, look at how amazing they turned out, the roasted peppers and everything else, I just feel like it would be a little bit tricky to divvy them up into each jar. I don't think that there's a large amount of ingredients besides the uh, squash. So I'm going to go ahead and stir it all up together. Start with a little bit of our squat. Roasted bell peppers. Three medium to small onions. Three large jalapenos. About six-ish medium carrots. And the rest of our squash. I'm just going to combine all of this. In the early morning rain. Now that our mixture is mixed, I'm going to take this opportunity to get that monster of a canner started heating up. I should have done that already, but oh well, that's where we're at. I'm going to fill this bit boy with about three inches of water. Okay guys, it is finally time to start jarring up our butternut squash soup base. So I don't know how many quarts we're going to end up with, but we'll find out together. We're just going to go ahead and fill each of our jars almost to about an inch head space with our mixture. about good for now. We'll see what we come up with. All of our jars are filled up to a little bit less than an inch of head space with our solids. It's quite a beautiful mixture, I think. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm only gonna add salt to this. It's not iodized salt, don't use iodized salt in your canning. Um, but I was discussing it with my sweetheart and we decided to just go ahead and leave it plain so we can go with more of a fall type of a seasoning or you can go with an Indian curry type later when we open it up and blend it. So I'm just going to add salt, get our lids on, and we'll be ready to go.
I'm adding one teaspoon of salt to each of these jars. This is blue Celtic salt. It has all the good minerals in there. I'm excited about this one. You do not have to add salt to your canning recipes. It has nothing to do with preservation. It is simply for flavor only. Yep. The only thing left to do is fill up our jars with our broth. Kinda, not really the only thing, but yeah. It is a very, very thick and potent broth. So I'm gonna go ahead and start out with two full scoops with each jar. Make sure that all 15 jars get their fair share of broth and then just see where we're at. You might need to top it off with water, but I hope not. good we're only ever so slightly shy on our broth for each one see how dark and potent that is oh I wish you could smell this right now so good so I'm gonna go ahead and debubble all of our jars get all the air bubbles out from underneath there and then top them off to our one inch headspace clean off our rims with some light distilled vinegar. You'd be surprised how much squash is stuck on the sides of these. Gotta be careful. Don't want anything interrupting our seal. I'm gonna wipe these last ones again because I just had so much orange colored squash on there. I'm just gonna play it safe and do it again. And we just go ahead and secure our wings, oops, fingertip tight, and into the canner. Finally ready for the canner. I haven't used this one in quite a while, so it is in need of the greasing around the seal edge. It needs to be kind of slick. You never want it to uh, get stuck. There we are, that's that. We are good to go for now and we will see what our butternut, butternut squash soup base looks like when it's done. Okay, it's late now, but we gotta take our cans out of the canner. Let's see how it goes. All right, so we have our 15 jars of butternut squash soup base. And they all look amazing. Everything looks good. They're all bubbling away. I'm really excited to get these um, up on the pantry shelf. We'll get them washed up tomorrow evening and get them put up on the shelf. Thank you so much for joining me here today on the Hamakua Homestead. I will see you soon.